Hi everyone. Um, I'm Jess Slavin with Mass Bike. I'm our communications coordinator. We're so excited to have you here to chat summer bike adventures with us. So we'd like to start these Mass Bike meetups with a little overview of Mass Bike's values. So we are aiming to be a resource for better bicycling for all riders across Massachusetts. Um, we focus on policies, funding, and legislation, and we also support all of our coalition partners across the state, um, grassroots organizations to official local like bike ped committees. Anyone who is working for better bicycling across Massachusetts, we want to work with you and help support your projects. Um, and we also use the ease of bicycling advocacy as kind of our framework with education, engineering, encouragement, evaluation, and a little bit of enforcement. So summer adventures by bike. That's why we're here to chat. I hope you all got out riding on the summer solstice recently. Um, a great time to uh, get out there and celebrate the longest day of the year. Um, but if you haven't, and you're still trying to plan your summer bike adventures, hopefully um, this webinar will really kick things off for you for your summer riding. Um, we have Christine Keeney here with the East Coast Greenway Alliance. Um, and then we, oh, hey, I'm sorry, just barely along. Um, and then we have Urban Dirt, um, Chase and Matt. I think you're both going to come chat with us. Um, and then I have a couple of summer bicycling adventure ideas and tips for you all. And then we'll have some time at the end um, to chat. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to fully seed it over to Christine, who can tell us all about the East Coast Greenway and how you can use it to adventure this summer. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Christine Keeney. Oh. I'm muted. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> uh, hi, everyone. Um, thanks for having me. I'm Christine Keeney. I'm the Northern New England uh, manager for the East Coast Greenway Alliance. Um, for anyone who doesn't know us, um, we are a nonprofit um, whose mission is to build out the East Coast Greenway, um, a connected network of bicycle and pedestrian infrastructure, multi-use paths, separated bike lanes um, from Calais, Maine to Key West, Florida um, for people of all ages and all abilities. Um, and I'm here today to just give you a few trip ideas um, along the East Coast Greenway um, and some resources um, that we have um, for you to check out and, um, and hopefully get out there and ride uh, this summer. Um, so first I wanted to talk about the Border to Boston Trail. Um, and it is basically, uh, it's, a, it's an existing route um, that is uh, fully signed um, as part of the East Coast Greenway. So there's wayfinding signage along this route. Um, but it is still a combination of on-road, interim on-road, um, as well as off-road trails. So between Boston and the New Hampshire border, um, the East Coast Greenway routes you on as much off-road um, trail as possible um, to avoid traffic. Um, and the great thing about it is there's different um, options in terms of, um, you know, how much of it you want to um, try and check out. It's not like you have to, you know, do the whole 75 miles, um, which you could, um, but there's other smaller chunks that um, our uh, state, our Massachusetts State Committee Chair and Super Volunteer Dave Reed um, was kind enough to put together um, some trip itineraries that we host on our website. Um, so you can find all of our trip itineraries that we have kind of curated from um, our larger route um, map. Um, we have an interactive route map, which um, will be mentioned later in the presentation where you could check out the whole route. You can type in Boston and it'll zoom right in and you can look at, you know, what are the trails that are part of the East Coast Greenway in my area? Um, and then you can also download a GPX file um, and use it either with a GPS um, enabled app on your phone or with a GPS device that you bring um, on your bike, um, if you wanted to also have like the turn by turn directions. So you can do that through our um, website, our mapping tool. And then um, we also have the wayfinding signage, like I said, on the ground. Um, but so for the Border to Boston Trail, um, as I said, there's a couple different options um, and some of them involve using the train, um, which is great. Um, we love, you know, biking and walking trips connected with transit and um, even recreational trips, you know, are no different of, um, you know, 
getting yourself to one place and biking back or starting and getting to an end spot and taking the train back. So some of these um, itineraries involve that. Um, and this is uh, the map that's shown on the screen is the newest border to Boston trail map. Um, and the, uh, the maroons uh, dotted line um, is the route right now. Um, and you can also find this map um, if you look up, uh, if you basically if you Google, bo Google border to Boston trail, it'll take you to the Essex National Heritage Area website and you'll be able to easily locate this kind of static map if you want to. Um, there's also paper maps available um, from Essex Heritage as well. Um, so the dotted maroon lines um, is the route uh, now. And, right next to the line, it says whether it's um, on a trail or on road. Um, and there's several different um, trail segments as part of this route. And I'll I have some pictures coming up to show you kind of some of the things you can check out along the way. Um, but these itineraries that we have listed 17 miles, you know, that's, uh, it still might be a lot for, for some people, but um, because uh, a lot of it is multi-use trail and rail trail, it's, um, it's really flat. It's basically, you know, completely flat. Um, and so that makes the 17 miles a little bit easier, even if that sounds too um, aggressive for you. Don't be intimidated. Um, it's really great riding um, uh, from Lynn to Boston. Um, and we'll, I'll show you some pictures, as I said, but the Northern Strand um, Trail is a big part of that. And it's newly paved. Um, there's new, a new extension in Lynn of the trail. Um, and Everett is extending the trail right now. So this is right now a great resource um, to check out, um, but also will um, is just continuing to improve. So definitely keep it um, on your radar. Um, and if you wanted to do a longer trip instead of um, using the train um, one way from Lynn to Boston, you can do Lynn to Boston and back, um, which would be 34 miles. Um, Salem to Boston is also a great ride um, because there's lots of trail segments. Oh yes, thank you for putting bike to the sea um, in the chat. Uh, Ron, their amazing partner. We're super thankful for all the work that they're doing. And um, we've been really um, been able to uh, collaborate and really well over the last couple of years. Um, so Salem to Boston um, is great too, because there's a lot of trail. Um, there's several new segments of trail in Salem. Um, there's the Salem bike path, which is like a classic you know, Massachusetts uh, kind of rail trail bike path. You definitely want to check out that gets you to the Marblehead Rail Trail, goes right on the ocean, just gorgeous. Um, and then you, you connect to the Northern Strand, um, which is great. Um, Newburyport to Boston, another great option. I'm utilizing um, MBTA. Um, the Clipper City Rail Trail is beautiful um, in Newburyport if you haven't been to it. Um, and then lastly, the whole border to Boston trail, um, 75 miles. Some of the, um, as, you, as you go north from Salem, there's there's the Independence Greenway in Peabody. Um, there's the Danvers Rail Trail, the Topsfield Linear Common. Um, and then once you get into uh, Boxford, it goes on road, um, basically up to Newburyport um, to get on the Clipper City Rail Trail. And the orange lines on this map that you see are the segments that are under construction or are in process right now. They're either under construction or in a design phase. So you can see that this long kind of looping segment into um, Byfield and, and Boxford is actually going to be shortened um, and become the orange line um, as the Border to Boston Trail segments move forward, um, especially thanks uh, to Mass Trails, um, Mass DOT. Um, and others. So you, and then you can see some other orange segments um, just south of um, Danvers. That's in PBD. There's two segments um, that are in design right now, going to be constructed in 24 and 25. Um, and then you can see the one closer to Everett. That's the Everett extension, which should be done later this year. So um, sorry if that's too much detail, but greenway.org slash trips, you can find the border to Boston has its own itinerary. And when you click on that, it will give you the breakdown. And it also provides um, lots of great details if you just want to advance, Jess. Um, like, uh, so on that page for this itinerary gives you local knowledge, um, recommended rest stops. Um, and then these are just some highlighting, uh, some pictures of highlights along the way. Um, this is in Everett at the Encore Casino. Um, this segment um, at the casino actually just became officially part of the East Coast Greenway this past, past month. Um, it's incredibly beautiful um, and a great way to see the Mystic River. So um, it's definitely worth checking out um, uh, in Everett, even before you get to the Northern Strand. Um, if you want to keep going, yeah, these are just some pictures. Uh, this is the Saugus section, brand new, upgraded. 
um, of the Northern Strand. This is a beautiful bridge, uh, trail bridge in Saugus, um, just really gorgeous through the marsh there. Um, this is uh, Daybreak Cafe in Topsfield is one of the highlighted stop locations um, for some great food along the Topsfield Linear Common. And this is um, my new colleague, Allison Burson, um, uh, formerly of the Salomon Foundation. Um, she's now the National Greenway Director at East Coast Greenway Alliance. Um, and this is her and Dave Reed um, cycling on the uh, new section of the Swampscott Rail Trail. So beautiful flowers. Um, there's so much good stuff to check out just between Boston and the border in New Hampshire. Um, and these are just a few more highlights. This is in Salem. This is a brand new section of trail along Canal Street that connects downtown Salem to the Salem bike path. This is the um, using the MBTA um, for some of these trips, um, either up to Lynn um, or Newburyport. Um, picture of the beautiful public art along the um, Clipper City Rail Trail. Um, if you haven't been, I really recommend it. The public art is fantastic. And this is our friend Pete Sutton um, cycling on the new section um, of trail, the new section of the Salisbury Rail Trail. Um, beautiful, 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 if you haven't seen it. Okay, so this is another trip um, that you can find on greenway.org slash trips, um, the Boston to Cape Cod Loop itinerary. So that's the name when you go to uh, greenway.org slash trips to look for um, and click on it and you'll get all much more information than what I'm giving you right now. These are just kind of the uh, high level um, points. Um, so this trip, um, again, you can break it up. So the South Coast of Massachusetts and Cape Cod, um, if you want to do the whole thing, um, you can take the Amtrak or MBTA to Providence, Rhode Island. Um, but if you want to have, a, if you want to do a shorter trip, you can take um, Cape Flyer from Boston um, to either Bourne or Hyannis, um, depending on, you know, what, how many miles you want to do. Um, and you can use our map tool, map.greenway.org, um, to put in these places. So you could put in Hyannis, Mass, and then you click, yes, use this location. Then you, then you type in Provincetown, Mass, use this location, and then it actually gives you the route it gives you the cues. You can download the GPX file, like I said, so you can kind of mess with it in terms of like how many miles you want to do, what, uh, what trails are part of that route. Um, so depending on what you choose, you could start in Providence um, and you ride all the way to Provincetown. Um, we're going to show you some highlight pictures from when Galen and I did it a couple of years ago, and it was awesome. I honestly can't wait to do it again. Um, and then, or you can, um, if your adventure is Hyannis to P-Town, which is great. Um, and also I'd really recommend as a introductory trip. Um, I used to do it um, as part of the Northeastern Outing Club. We would ride from Boston um, to Provincetown. And that was like my intro. Um, I, it was a great intro trip. I mean, it was certainly long. Um, so if you did just Hyannis to P-Town, um, the majority of it's on the Cape Cod Rail Trail, which is just, you know, pretty much flat as a pancake, um, but beautiful and access to great beaches and great state parks. So um, just easy, enjoyable, um, you know, great trip to do. Um, and then no matter which adventure you choose, you would take the ferry um, from Provincetown back to Boston. There's plenty of room for bikes. Um, they have a huge bike rack on the front of the ferries. And it's honestly, when I've been on it, it's like full um, in the summer. And so that's really cool and, and also easy. And then you can just bike home from the very, uh, hopefully, um, or take transit with your bike. Um, if you just want to go forward a little bit, yep. Train, uh, bikes on the Cape flyer. Um, pretty easy. Get it on there. So this is the start of Galen and I's trip. Um, this is, um, yeah, this is in Providence, Rhode Island. Um, this is a beautiful brand new bicycle and pedestrian only bridge that goes across the Pop Providence river in downtown. It's much larger, like the span. And then there's some additional sections where they have for like public speak, uh, public space and, and performances and stuff. So it's even more beautiful than that picture. Um, gotta stop, stop at Dells, um, on the East Bay bike path, which goes from Providence um, all the way down to, I think it's Barrington. We get off of it um, in Warren, the East Coast Greenway, but Dells is literally on the East Bristol. Bay. Path. Bristol. Bristol. Sorry. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Dells is right on the East Bay bike path and that's like classic Rhode Island. So like what a great way to celebrate summer and ride your bike and get some Dells. Um, what else we got? This is so this is Galen um, riding on it's a really one of the coolest pieces of bike pit infrastructure I've ever seen, which is the hurricane barrier in New Bedford. Um, if you haven't been on it, I highly recommend it. Um, you can see like it's up, it's up high, you get a great view. 
Um, and there's also this cool um, kind of artwork um, like representing the hurricane barrier um, on the trail itself. Um, this is on the Cape Cod Rail Trail, um, which was extended a couple of years ago, um, which is again, also always getting better. Um, keep going, yep. Uh, this is, uh, yep, Galen and at uh, one of those really nice kiosks. I think this might be at the awesome bike roundabout on the Cape Cod Rail Trail, which is also a very cool piece of infrastructure if you haven't seen it. Galen and I just like rode around it a couple of times just for fun. Um, this is an on-road section um, uh, uh, between Wellfleet and Provincetown, but I mean, flat, super nice. There are some hills once you get off the Cape Cod Rail Trail and Wellfleet, so be advised of that if you want to go all the way to P-Town. Um, you know, the Cape Cod Canal Trail. This is me and Galen on an adventure. This is not part of our route, so don't be freaked out like they're going to end up in a sand pit. But um, this was Galen and I doing some scouting um, for potential trails in the future. But it's kind of like, I just like this picture because like, you know, it's hot, it's sandy, like we're doing something silly and like just have fun um, and explore and, and see what you can find. And you'll probably find some good stuff. So um, check out us out at greenway.org. Um, our mapping tool is map.greenway.org. And I hope you have fun riding this summer. Thank you so much, Christine. Um, I think we had a couple of questions in the chat if there's still a detour on the East Bay Trail. Um, I don't believe so, although the detour, oh no, actually there might be, there might be. Um, I'm not sure if that is actually off of like, cause the East Coast Greenway gets off of the East Bay bike path to head um, towards Massachusetts. So it, the East Bay bike path continues south. And I think the detour that you're talking about is actually south of where we route off in Warren. Um, and I do believe that detour might still be in place because I know there's like a, there's kind of like a, there's, uh, you know, there's like a problem and it's like, which jurisdiction is going to fix it, the city or the DOT. And the, so I do think there is still a detour, but it's not part of the East Coast Greenway route. Awesome, thanks. Um, and then Ron is asking if there's a good way to get to New Bedford other than bike all the way there. And Ron, let us hope that the MBTA continues to uh, their planned expansion with the commuter rail. Um, <laughs> But yeah, right yeah, no, there the South Coast Rail um, is happening. Um, and I work a lot with New Bedford um, and other communities on the South Coast. And yeah, no, they're in full mode to to plan out um, the stations and and also thinking about the bike ped connections, which is really, really, really nice of like having that ability and not and like, you know, being proactive to plan that out. And part of it is thinking about how to connect to the regional South Coast bikeway. Um, so not only how do people get locally from where they live to transit, um, but also how do they get to like the spine, the corridor where they can continue on from that transit stop and, and go um, wherever they wanna go, whether it's for- But in the meantime, before the train, before the South Coast rail opens, how would I get myself and my bike to New Bedford? Yeah, um, that's a good question. How do you question. do it? Um, so in this case, um, in this case, um, our, uh, what I was recommending is, is starting in Providence and, and going through New Bedford and continuing. Um, okay. and so I guess I don't necessarily have a good answer to how you could get you and your bike to New Bedford before the rail is open. If you wanted to go directly there and not utilize a car and maybe someone else might have a suggestion, but. Yeah, our route basically, um, if you go to map.greenway.org, you can see, you know, exactly where it is and, and see kind of where it starts and where it goes through. But um, yeah, sorry, I don't have a better answer for New Bedford, but hopefully soon, 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 soon. I hope it's soon because so I can get down there too with just using the train because um, I live in Maine um, and um, I work with communities on the South Coast and, you know, there's times where I need to go down there and man, would I rather take the train than to have to drive from Maine. There's a bus called there's a bus called Datco that goes to New Bedford, but they just in the last two years they removed almost all their weekend service. Oh, okay. Hmm. Dang. If you, well, if, yeah. you, if you drive a car, you can park at Pope Island. It's in New Bedford. Interesting. Interesting. The yeah, if there's it's right also, near the draw, it's right near the swing bridge. You know where the swing bridge is? 
There's a swing bridge that's for, for the, let the boat traffic go through. Oh, yeah, I think I know what you're talking There's about. There's a pretty large parking lot there. Gotcha. Awesome. That is helpful to know. Thanks, um, Richard, for that input for the parking. Um, hopefully, the MBTA will move fast and we can get some trains down there soon. Um, and thank you, Christine. We're going to move it on over to Urban Dirt, um, who is going to talk a little bit about uh, their adventuring philosophy. Sweet. Thanks, Jess. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Chase Duffin. Um, myself and, and my buddy Matt uh, Cheek here are, are uh, here to talk to you today about Urban Dirt. Um, thank you for having us. Um, so Urban Dirt is really about um, riding bikes in all of our city's backyards. Um, and so what we focused on in uh, 2020 was um, kind of building an organization that is primarily focused on single day routes, uh, off-road routes that you can get to from metro areas. So, um, you know, a key tenant of that is not having to drive a car. A lot of traditional New England mountain biking, um, you know, kind of relies on that. Um, but what we found is that there are, uh, you know, large swaths of uh, off-road riding that you can get to from the city, whether that's riding out there yourself um, or, you know, taking um, a variety of transit options. So the MBTA is a great, um, a, a great place to start there. Um, so I talked a little bit about that route library building. Um, as you can see here on the screen, we've got a nice um, collection of routes out of the Metro Boston area. Um, they range from about 15 all the way up to like 70 or 80 miles. Um, but the, the goal is to have them accomplishable in a certain day and kind of, um, you know, have a challenge for everyone, right? Make sure that everyone can get the kind of riding that they want in. Um, in New England and, and especially in the Boston area, um, gravel is really, really difficult to find. Um, certainly one of our more fun surfaces to ride on, but um, what we find is that there's a lot of, you know, more traditional mountain biking terrains, so rocks, routes, sink track, and that sort of thing. Um, but it can be, you know, still a lot of fun to ride on. Um, in terms of bikes, like we, one of the the um, missions is to, you know, make it accessible to people with bikes that they already have. Um, so a lot of us started doing this off-road riding with, um, you know, fully rigid bikes uh, with anywhere from 42 to 2.2 inch tire, 42 millimeter to 2.2 inch tires. Um, but again, the the goal is to make it accessible. Um, and so we are, you know, trying to design the routes and uh, map out the terrain in such a way that um, really allows you to come to it with uh, whatever bike you currently have, um, with the exception of, you know, maybe really narrow uh, tired road bikes. Um, and so, you know, as you can see on the left side, we've got um, six urban areas that we've started in the U.S. and one international in Lyon, France. Um, and we're looking to expand those. Um, we call the the um, locales hubs naturally. Um, and then, yeah, so far we've got a pretty good uh, network in the U.S. Certainly looking to expand that as well. Um, could you go to the next slide? Thank you, Jess. Um, so these are some uh, photos that we've collected over the past couple of years of people riding urban dirt routes. Um, some of you might recognize uh, some of the ones local to Boston, namely that water tower that Keeley's on in the uh, bottom left there. Um, but you know, a lot of these, some of these are from New England, some are from the West Coast. Um, but generally, you know, you can see there's smiles on everyone's faces there. It's uh, one of the another one of the goals is joy, right? And finding that joy in off-road riding. Um, one of the things I think that I've observed and that many urban dirt riders have observed is that the, the stress levels when you're in the woods versus on the road are just, you know, far apart. And, um, you know, we found a lot of enjoyment in exploring the, um, you know, often forgotten or, you know, hidden areas uh, uh, from hidden natural areas from our uh, cities. Uh, next slide, please. And I'll hand it over to Matt to talk a little bit about School of Dirt, which is another uh, recent initiative. Hey folks, um, can you everyone hear me? Yep. Great. Uh, so last year we were um, graced with a, a grant to start uh, outdoor education for youth in the city. Um, and we kind of really utilized that uh, grant money to build a fleet of um, old steel rigid mountain bikes uh, and uh, navigation devices. So the purpose of this School of Dirt is to 
really empower youth in the area who may not have experienced mountain biking or even bringing a bike into the woods before and teach them some of the skills required to do that safely, the technique for going over different obstacles and terrain, how to, you know, um, troubleshoot and maintain a bicycle, uh, and uh, most importantly, uh, navigation, wayfinding, and route planning. Um, we had our first three sessions last year uh, with some partner organizations in the area with uh, Youth Enrichment Services, YES, being our, our first uh, collaborator. Um, going into our second year of this, we've uh, expanded a little bit in, uh, with Bikes Not Bombs and are looking to continue uh, growing our programming with uh, outdoor youth education. Um, we've done some individual one-off uh, adult education and one-on-one -on -one sessions uh, with people who are interested in learning some of this material. Um, and in the coming year or two, we're looking to kind of expand our programming to utilize the, the fleet of bikes and navigation devices we have to, to teach audiences uh, wider than what the grant was originally intended for. Um, you can see on the right, uh, some photos of our exploration and education in Stony Brook Park in the city of Boston. Um, we're really fortunate uh, in the city to have some good areas to learn in. Uh, and so our current curriculum is, is taught in both Franklin Park and Stony Brook. I see Ron Newman has a question. How suitable is a hybrid, not mountain bike for the urban dirt trails? Um, that's a bit of a challenging question at, uh, answer because people have different um, thresholds for comfort um, when it comes to different terrain. Uh, a lot of us who are involved in kind of creating and curating this don't mind doing what's called underbiking. Uh, for anyone unfamiliar with the concept, it's uh, taking a bicycle on terrain it's not designed for. Um, and so that can be a bouncy experience. Um, and uh, having said that, you know, I've taken my commuter bike, you know, with 38 millimeter smooth tires on all kinds of trails, uh, but I don't mind doing that. I think if you are familiar with that idea and have done it before, you you would be all right on, you know, the easy and maybe up to intermediate courses. I would not do that uh, on any of our courses that are uh, above intermediate. Uh, I think it'll be a little too bouncy and maybe a little less fun. Um, something we try to really convey um, on our routes is the minimum recommended tire size. Uh, all of that assumes you do not have any suspension on your bike. Um, and a lot of people have different thresholds for, or not thresholds, uh, support, you know, their frame can support different width tires. And so they may be limited with their current bike. Here, we'll get you um, yeah, uh, next slide, I guess. Uh, so these are all happy faces from Stony Brook and, uh, Franklin Park and, and some examples of the kinds of terrain um, that our courses have. Um, you know, these are uh, actually good pictures. Oh, these are good pictures of the uh, types of uh, terrain in some of our easy, uh, you know, novice to intermediate routes. Um, and, you know, if this looks like something that you would feel comfortable doing on a hybrid bike, you're more than welcome to embark on that. Um, and I know we've, we've both done rides on this and city commuter bikes. Uh, next slide. Thank you. Um, so just talking a little bit about what we're focused on this year, um, kind of our, our uh, trail map, as it were. Um, so obviously, one of the things that we want to get into more and part of the reason why we're here today is more active community engagement. And so that means talking to folks like you, um, but also, you know, uh, inviting uh, other riders that we meet while we're out um, and, you know, really getting more engaged in um, some of the partnership building as well um, with other organizations. So, um, you know, Christina, it was really nice to hear uh, more about the Greenway. Um, I'd love to talk with you about, you know, other ways we can get involved. And certainly there's a ton of, you know, there's a plethora of bike organizations throughout Massachusetts that, um, you know, aren't specifically uh, focused on, on road riding. And I think there's a lot of uh, room for cross collaboration there and growth and, um, you know, more or trying to find new ways to engage. Um, another, you know, effort that we want to focus on is is being more inclusive and um, growing our diversity. Um, so I know there's a lot of, you know, cycling historically has been a pretty difficult to approach sport, and a lot of people don't have the resources to get into it. Um, and so part of the mission of 
school of dirt is to approach um, those communities who ha don't necessarily have um, that access um, and, and you know make it more accessible. Um, there's lots of other ways that we can do that as well, and uh, we have an eye to that this year for sure. Um, again, uh, Matt recommended uh, talked about expanding our school of dirt, so um, focusing on a more formalized curriculum where people can like track their progress, um, you know, get, get achievements for uh, completing certain levels of the programming. Um, we also are considering, uh, you know, ways that we could introduce bikepacking to folks through this medium as well. Um, and then, as Matt mentioned, um, widening the audience and making it uh, more available to adults who want to um, learn off-road skills as well. Um, another thing that we, you know, really want to get uh, more involved in is uh, pulling in contributions from community members. We've had uh, you know, a handful of routes that have been contributed so far, but certainly we want to um, we want to make this a community effort and uh, curate, publish, and uh, you know, kind of evangelize the routes that you um, all know and love as well, off-road riding. So um, do send us those. Um, we'd be happy to put them on our site with your name and um, and share them with the rest of the community. Um, we're also thinking about doing more uh, formal events. So having, you know, planned group rides that folks can come and attend, um, meet us and meet other uh, like-minded individuals and um, get out and ride together. Um, and we're also targeting, uh, we're pushing for a, our 501c3 uh, status. We're a registered nonprofit in Massachusetts, but obviously that federal recognition comes with um, a lot of benefits. Um, and I think really uh, is core to our mission. So, And Matt, to cap us off. Yeah, if uh, any of this sounds like something you might enjoy, I, I recommend uh, visiting our website, urbandirt.org. Um, should be pretty easy to find the Boston hub from there. Uh, the map, and the list of uh, routes are, are great ways to see, you know, which direction you might want to go from home. If you are in the city area, um, some of our routes are accessible by train or start and end at commuter rails. Um, other ways to get involved are uh, to become a member on our Patreon for one dollar a month. Um, that gets us uh, gets you access to our Slack and some other membership perks like swag. Um, uh, we don't really. You know, it's not a, a source of income for us more than, you know, keeping the website hosted. It's more about kind of tracking uh, current engagement, you know, people who find value in what we're offering. As Chase mentioned, there's a, a forum to submit routes um, that you think meet um, the mission uh, and the criteria and vision of what we're trying to do in the area. Uh, and as always, tell your friends and uh, feel free to reach out and get involved with either of us. Thank you so much. Um, okay, so I have some general uh, bike adventuring tips now that we've had some great chats about more specific ways you can get on your bike. Thanks again to Christine and to and Chase for their awesome um, present, presentations today. Um, so if you are getting ready for your summer bike adventures, uh, make sure you give your bike a tune up, get some bike maintenance. I know many of us have already been riding, but if you haven't done your yearly at least maintenance on your bicycle, now is the time. Um, also, I like to remind everyone that you need to make sure that your water bottles and hydration packs are ready to go. Um, I know I've been a victim of this where I haven't washed my bottles regularly enough. So if your bottles need a bath, um, this is the time to make sure you've cleaned them out so that they're ready to roll, um, especially for folks who use um, like electrolyte powders or something um, in their water bottle. Um, that stuff can get a little dirty and nasty if you haven't rinsed out your bottles. Um, so just want to advocate for clean water bottles before you get riding this summer. Um, and to be super mindful of the heat out there as well. Um, I am someone who is not really great in the heat, so it's something I keep in mind quite often. Um, but as the early summer rides can really take a toll on us um, who haven't been riding in the heat, um, so I just want to remind everyone to keep a, keep an eye out for on that heat index and make sure you have enough water or have planned a route that's shaded or has a swimming hole at the end so that you can cool off. Um, 
make sure you have your sunscreen with you as well or um Ooh, Matt has a good idea. Don't wear a backpack if it's over 85 degrees. It gets it gets hot. Um, I know I suffer from that sometimes when I wear my hydration pack and it's a little too hot outside. I personally like using my hydration pack when I'm mountain biking because it helps me remember to drink a little easier than having a bottle in a bottle cage, um, but it can overheat you pretty quickly. Um, yeah, wearing sunscreen, I recommend. I'm an exceptionally sunburn prone human, but all of us can benefit from some uh, sun protection. There's also some really great, like lightweight, long sleeved gear out there that you can wear when you're riding. Um, if remembering to reapply your sunscreen is hard for you. Um, I have a couple of UPF 50 shirts that are awesome. Um, I also, highly recommend finding some riding buddies. So um, many local shops have group rides. Um, I would recommend uh, stopping by your local shop's group ride if that feels comfy to you and find some people to ride with. Um, and then the number one bike adventure tip I have is to have fun. <laughs> um, we want to, our bikes are a source of joy and that's kind of what our summer riding wants to be. Um, so I have some other like small ideas for us all and then we can share at the end. Um, the Asha Wiltecook Rail Trail, if you haven't been out into the Berkshires recently, um, it's up to about 14 miles. It's an awesome rail trail. It's pretty shaded. It has some like stellar views. Um, and my pro tip is that if you bring cash, you can stop at Diane's Twist in Cheshire. Um, they have really great soft serve ice cream there, um, and it's a really fun stop. I was just um, out there a couple of weeks ago. There was a really cool dance performance along the trail where you could stop. Um, it was very cool. Um, best way to get a bike to Pittsfield right now. Um, let us hope the East West Rail continues as well. <laughs> um so uh if you want to get i meant this year uh, i don't have a great suggestion for you this year ron unfortunately um th that is one of the downsides uh to western mass at the moment is public transportation get all the way up there um i'm not yeah i'm not 100 percent sure on that um for those of you who might be interested in uh, bikepacking, um, we did do a webinar um, a couple years back now about bikepacking the base circuit trail. Um, so that's a great one if you want to check that out. Um, and then Sarah Freeman sent in a suggestion for the Emerald Necklace Beyond the Pond. Um, and gave some great tips on how to navigate that route. Um, if you haven't biked along the Emerald Necklace, it's a really beautiful place to bike. Um, and it is, uh, there's a lot more infrastructure along there now than there used to be. So, um, and I will send out this link to everyone after um, so you can get Sarah's awesome instructions on how to navigate that route. Uh, and then I put together a list of some ideas uh, to kickstart you on your summer bike adventures. Um, I always highly recommend ice cream rides. Is there a local ice cream shack that you can ride to? I know there's a few out here near me. Um, bike to swim adventures are my new favorite. Um, I live out in Northampton where there are some really awesome swim spots on the Mill River off the rail trail. So that's a really awesome thing on hot days. Um, I always recommend checking out something new. Um, so there are rail trails being built all across Massachusetts that are so much fun to ride on. And I am certain there's probably one that you haven't ridden yet. So my challenge to you would be to find a new rail trail to you um, and take it, go for a ride out there. Um, bike to parks is also a great um, challenge for you all. Um, bike to your local or state park. Um, and then try a new style of riding. So last summer, um, I had never done lift access downhill mountain biking and I went down to Thunder Mountain Bike Park. 
um, and tried that out. It was so much fun. So uh, something you could do this summer is try something that is new to you. Um, so maybe I should start doing some more intense word writing because that's not really uh, what I usually go for. Um, awesome. So here are a few resources. Um, the MAPC trail map, you can sort by like surface of the trails throughout Massachusetts. So it's a really cool interactive map. Um, the New England Mountain Biking Association, if you're thinking about getting into off-road mountain biking riding, uh, their chapters host a lot of group rides. So if you're looking for a group ride that's on dirt, you might be able to find something with them. Um, if you're looking to do some more like bike camping, bike packing, um, both Adventure Cycling Association and Bikepacking.com have great resources there. Um, Adventure Cycling also has their own Boston to Cape Cod weekend route. So um, I linked that there, but they're kind of on a short trips push. Um, so Adventure Cycling Association is looking to create more routes that are um, shorter that you could do in a weekend, um, whereas a lot of their other routes are a little longer. So um, that's something to keep an eye on. Um, I always like to suggest the Radical Adventure Riders as a resource. They have some great intersectional resources on how to make your riding more inclusive to everyone. Um, they just launched a how to um, lead a group ride guide. That's awesome. Um, and then as Christine noted, uh, East Coast Greenery, the map is awesome and you can check it out.